One of the most important steps in growing a successful garden is keeping animals out. Things like deer, goats, chickens, and even dogs can devastate your garden before it ever has a chance to grow. Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and today I'm going to be walking you through the steps of setting up the fence around my garden, showing you what I use. Uh, I have an awesome fence that I've used for three years now that keeps every animal out of my garden, whether it be rabbits, squirrels, goats, deer, anything. It will keep them out. But before we get too far into it, I want to say a huge thank you to Xmark, the makers of professional lawn mowing equipment, for sponsoring today's video. So before I set my fence up, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the lawnmower and mow all, everything around where the perimeter of the fence is going to be. We want to keep that grass nice and short. After I put the fence up, sometimes I'll come in here with a herbicide, a non-selective herbicide. I know a lot of you don't agree with that, but I'll spray just a real small strip at the bottom of this electrified fence just so the grass doesn't grow up and ground out the fence. But let's fire up the mower and get some mowing done real quick. all clear now it's time to start unrolling my electric fence netting and this stuff is really easy to work with it's got stakes on the bottom of the post that are all built into the net you just basically just step on the post drive it in the ground wherever you want and string up your fence so let's get started So now that we've made it to the end of our first roll of electric fencing, it's time to install a gate. Now, Premier One, which is the company that, that has made all of this equipment, sells many, many different types and sizes of fence. A lot of them are made for uh, sheep and goats and chickens and small animals. So you can literally just step over the fence and get in. Obviously the deer fence is a little too tall to be stepping over. So Premier One came up with a gate system that works to keep the rest of your fence electrified and gives you walk-through access. And we'll put our electrifier, our energizer, right here in this area so that we can turn it off come in the garden and we don't have to worry about being zapped by the fence. But this is built in a way to where you can open and close it without having to turn the fence off if that's what you choose. So the next step is gonna be hooking up the fence charger and the, the fence charger that Premier One recommends for my application is the IntelliShock 120. And like you can see, it is solar. So you're going to want to make sure you set this up to where it catches south facing sun as many hours of the day as possible. And I'm going on the third year of this application using the same charger, the same batteries, and it's all worked out really well. Now, every once in a while, if we have, you know, say a week of cloud cover where we don't get much sun at all, um the button right here the power button when you push it turn it on it flashes green if the batteries are low it'll flash red kind of give you an indicator hey just take the batteries out throw them on the charger that's included with the kit and uh, let them charge for a day or two and your fence is good to go so let's get this hooked up now premier one included two grounding rods i was having some issues the first couple of years 
So I've got two separate grounding rods. And as long as the fence stays grounded well, I haven't had any issues. I'm gonna have to get a hammer to drive these T-handle grounding rods all the way into the ground. Might be able to get this one. So this other set of clamps that I have is used to connect the main fence to the gate. So when we have our gate connected, that allows the rest of the fence to be electrified. What are you doing over there hiding in the corner, Houston? So all of our fence is now hooked up. I did go ahead and go all the way around the high tunnel because my goats absolutely love to try to sneak in there. Uh, the deer, believe it or not, in years past I've had a lot of problems with deer because you can see we live in the country and we have a lot of deer. The deer will actually go in there at night and eat our vegetables. I never would have dreamed a deer would walk inside of that building, but they do. So a lot of you are gonna say, hey, deer can jump eight feet. They'll clear that fence easy. And that was my thought too when I first got this product because deer jump over fences all the time. But the theory here is when you, when you put this up, it's very, very important to make sure that you get the fence energized the first day. Because while this is a physical barrier that keeps the deer out, it's also a mental barrier. So since it's an electric fence, you, you need it to be hot as soon as you put it up. The first time a deer walks up here, they're gonna notice, hey, something's new. They're gonna stick their nose to it and immediately get zapped. And it becomes a mental barrier. Now. This is in the, not in the right spot, but Premier One also includes these little caps. I'm going to move this down lower, and they give you some apple-flavored scent liquid, and you can put it on there, so any animal is going to be drawn to that first, and they're going to stick their tongue or their nose in there, and it's going to zap them. So it's not going to hurt them. It's not something that's going to injure an animal, but it's a physical and a mental barrier for these animals. So now's the time. Let's get the fence hooked up and test it out. All right, let's test it out. So we got a little tester here, if it'll focus on it. You can see, <laughs> if we can get it to focus. So we got a red light right here, put it on the fence. All right, we're not up to a full 8,000, but we're hitting at 6,000 right now. And that's probably just because the fence isn't, or the, the charger's not fully charged right now. So we get a little sunlight, charge up those batteries. We'll have a nice hot fence. I'll be sure to go around and check it in multiple places to make sure it's not grounding out. So if you're looking for a solution to keep animals out of your garden, whether it be deer, goats, chickens, whatever it is, you can check out this fence at premieronesupplies.com. Uh, they've got a huge assortment of lots of different um, hobby farm, small farm supplies. It's not just the netting, they've got all kinds of stuff. But if you're looking for a way to keep chickens in or keep goats and sheep in a small area, and move them around pastures and things. They've got different size nettings just like this for poultry and livestock and all kinds of different things. Um, I'm really, really satisfied with the results I've had with this Premier One deer fence. Uh, like I said, we're going into our third year growing a garden inside this and I've yet to have a deer, a rabbit, or a goat, anything like that, get in and destroy the vegetables. As long as you make sure that fence is hot and keep it hot. Like I said earlier, it's very important that you have it energized the day you put it up so that every animal that walks up to see what it is knows that they're going to get a little zap from it and uh, they won't test it i promise so guys that's all i've got for today be sure to check out the links in the description box you can, or you can visit xmark.com backyard for other content from other backyard lifestyle creators such like us on xmark's website they've got content from other backyard creators that are doing outdoor cooking um, hunting, fishing, all kinds of cool stuff. So be sure to check them out. And as always, thanks to XMark for sponsoring today's video. So guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.